ADR, this is King Black. So they're about to go ahead and hire about over 80,000 more IRS agents to conduct these audits out here. Yeah, a lot of people out there living high on the hog with these PPP loan frauds are about to get what's coming. I know that a lot of people thought they were slick, that they were going to go ahead and uh, claim this money, say that they had 15, 20 employees and they needed $500,000, they needed a million dollars, blah, 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 pulling all these scams in other people's names, getting all this money. Buying Hellcats and Porsches and Lamborghinis and living it up and flashing on Instagram. Well, guess what? Now the audits are coming. Now they're hiring these IRS agents that can use deadly force in certain contexts, you know? So what does that mean, right? That means they're going to actively be investigating these people out here stealing identities and have applied for the PPP loans. You know, the hush puppies of the world, you know? And they're going to track you down. Why do you think they bought millions of rounds of ammo, the IRS? Ain't that crazy? A tax agency bought ammo. What do you think that was in preparation for? It was in preparation for this moment when the floodgates open and they're allowed to start the audit process on all of these PPP loan applications. And trying to track down where they legitimate, where they not. Now, some people who may have fudged the numbers may face a stiff penalty. You know, might have to pay some interest or might have to pay back the loan, of course. Some people are going to be legitimate, of course. But they're going to have to go through that audit process that nobody loves. Then you're going to have the people that are going to get got. And they're going to be looking at some pretty nice time behind prison bars and not just any type of prison you're talking about federal charges laid against these individuals now i ain't bitter but i'm glad that i didn't commit any of that because i tell you what spending five to eight years or longer in federal prison doesn't sound like a good time it doesn't matter if i got a million dollars out of it or five hundred thousand dollars out of it or two hundred thousand dollars out of it you know that money was quick. It was fast for the people that committed that type of crime, right? But what is it worth? What is it going to mean for them when they're behind bars and they get all of their assets seized and repoed? All you're doing is making it easier for the next one down the line to go ahead and pick up what you bought at a bargain price. You know, when they go ahead and repo that Hellcat is going to go up for auction at a repo. Uh, a lot, right? And then it's going to probably go for like, I don't know, $35,000, $40,000. And that's a steal, you know what I mean? Literally. So, the IRS is going to be coming. They're going to be training over 80,000 new agents. Now, that doesn't mean immediately it's going to get bad for people out there that were out there living the high life, right? But in about six months to maybe two years, as the agents get trained, you know, it's a high turnover job. So some people aren't going to make it. Some people are going to quit, whatever. But let's just say out of that initial 80,000, let's just be conservative and say half stay. Now you're looking at 40,000 new bodies to that agency to go ahead who have nothing better to do but to do these audits. And it is going to be reckoning time for those out there taking my hard-earned money. Because, yeah, you know, that wasn't free money. A lot of people say, yeah, the government prints out free money. But at the end of the day, it's funded by the taxpayers, though, ultimately, whether now or 10 years from now. Our payroll taxes are going to, go, are going to fund these things, right? But it's not enough. That's why we have a government deficit. Because they're spending more than what they bring in. And then we'll talk about the whole immigrant situation about D.C. and New York in another video. But that's a whole mess right there. And that's also going to end up contributing to higher rent prices. But I'll explain more about that in that video. But it just makes sense. It's common sense. Especially with some of the people that are in charge now 
having an open door policy. But I digress. So if any of y'all out there perpetrated this scheme, y'all just got to be extremely careful because they're going to be coming. And I know a lot of legitimate business owners didn't apply for that loan because they didn't want to have to go through that process eventually, or they just plain out didn't need it. You know, they felt bad and blah, blah, blah. You know, they wanted to let other people who did, in fact, need it, use it because that's what's in, what it was intended for, right? But, hey, whenever there's promise of, hey, we'll check later or we might never check, you're going to have a whole bunch of people with their hands out. And that's exactly what happened. You got all these people getting caught up little by little these rappers and stuff and their lyrics talking about PPP loans. And you got all these people getting got purchasing brand new cars, brand new homes. You know, they might get away with it for a year, 18 months. They end up getting got. Now where they at now facing multiple felonies. That's always going to follow you. They're getting all of their assets, you know, seized. So unless you took that money, converted it into something, and buried it somewhere where you only you know, like some kind of pirate in a treasure hunt, you know, all that money just pff, didn't do you any good. All it did was bought you three meals and a cop for the next seven years. And then four years in, you might start thinking to yourself, did all of that really happen? Is this some bad dream? Did I really have that money? Did I really spend it like that? Did I really do this decision? Because, like I said, when you go into those places, it's like a time machine, man. When you go in and you come out, everything's different. People have moved on with their lives. Neighborhood isn't the same anymore. People have come and gone. People have moved out. People you may know have passed. You know, just think about that. If you're behind them bars in that cell, if your parents are still alive, your cousins, anybody you care about, anybody that you're close to, while you're in there, one of them passes away, they're not going to let you out for the funeral, man. They're not going to let you see them one last time. And then you're going to be kicking yourself, wishing that you didn't do what you did. You're going to miss being able to go to something as simple as go to McDonald's, get a cheeseburger. You know what I mean? Instead, you're going to be worried about that somebody do something to your food. You know what I mean? You're going to be waiting for commissary to get that Cheetos. That's going to be your luxury meal for however long you're in there for. And me, coming from a economics background, right? Human resources, business management, business administration, you know? I'm kind of glad... And yeah, I say that, right, despite being what I am. But like I said, I'm not involved in nothing legal. So, I mean, it hurts. It doesn't hurt me to say it. I'm glad that, you know, they're going to finally do something about that. Because at the end of the day, that's also creating more inflation. You know what I mean? A lot of people out there apply for these PVP loans. All of a sudden, they got money. They got 800 grand. They start spending it here, spending there, spending it there. That contributes to the money supply, man. There's too much money in the system. Everything's getting more expensive. Y'all see that right now. With food prices, gas prices, rent prices. You know what I mean? Somebody took out one of those PPP loans for like 500 grand and stashed that away as rent money. They could easily spend $2,000 a month, $4,000 a month in a nice place. And what is that going to do for you if you're also applying? Right? It's going to raise the price for you. So this person can afford to spend that kind of money. Now you have to, too, just to keep up. And you had to work and you had to scrape by and you had to do this X, Y, Z to get that money. And all they had to do was apply for a PPP loan. But they're eventually going to get caught up. And you... Although, yeah, you didn't live the high life for six months. You're going to be all right because you're going to be free. And that's what it's all about is staying free, being free. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Nobody said it was necessarily going to be fun every time, all the time being free. 
But that's that is the name of the game, man. There's too many old heads out there that are finally getting out now after doing 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, regretting their choices in life. Me and others like me try to advocate. You know, you can be a part of some, but not have to perpetuate the stereotype. You can be free and contribute something to your organization and your community in a positive way. You know, all of this PPP loan fraud just serves selfish people. You know what I mean? They don't care about you. They don't care about the community. They don't care about helping nobody. They worry about, you know, flashing that money that ain't theirs all over the place. And then once all of that is gone and they can't get any more, it'll be kind of like an addict coming off. They're not going to know how to handle not having that kind of money anymore because they had a taste of it. They're going to get greedy. They're going to do something dumb. They might try to stick up a place or go rob a bank or whatever. And they're either going to end up getting killed or going to prison. It ain't worth it. So those of y'all or those or if you know anybody or even just in general, anybody who perpetuated that fraud, you know, you're going to you're going to eventually have to answer for it. And hey, it's only the right thing to do, though, right? I mean, like that old saying says, don't do the crime if you ain't willing to do the time. ADR, this is King Black out.